Meanwhile, uh, a woman that grew up uh, under Soviet rule, strategic analyst, intel analyst, I should say, Rebecca Koffler joins us now. Uh, Rebecca, where do you think, uh, oh, good morning to you, where do you think uh, we're at right now with this conflict? What do you think the president's visit means? Well, where we are with this conflict is that even uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs, uh, General Mark Milley, has admitted that there's no military path to victory for Ukraine. My uh, intelligence analysis tells me this war is unwinnable. Why? It's because uh, Putin's strategy is to outsuffer and outlast the adversary. Uh, Putin has assembled half a million of new recruits, 315 uh, joining the fight right now, 150 in training camps, okay? As you just said, uh, Brian, this is typical Putin, typical Russia, just throwing bodies into the meat grinder. Putin also knows that there's fatigue right now in the United States and in the West because the taxpayer is realizing that they've been um, uh, been sucked dry, you know, with 196 billion, as Lisa pointed out, and they just can't continue forever. And so this oopty do strategy that uh, President Biden just pulled off with his visit is not going to stop Putin. Putin is not afraid. He has a plan. I described this plan in my book, Putin's Playbook, uh, which uh, you have. Biden completely failed a deterrence failed at strategy, just schizophrenically throwing weaponry at Ukraine, hoping that somehow it's going to scare Putin. But unfortunately, it won't. Yeah, you know, Rebecca, to your point, I think a lot of Americans, you know, want to know what does winning look like, according to Zelensky? How much money is that going to take and how much human suffering has to happen to achieve that goal? Here's what Zelensky st stated repeatedly, uh, what victory looks like to him. It's evicting uh, the Russians from the entire territory of Ukraine. But is that feasible? It's absolutely not, because the Russians are entrenched, especially in Crimea. It's an existential uh, outcome of this war for Putin and for Russia. Um, and so it's just not feasible. And so somebody needs to realize that the strategy of just throwing weaponry is not going to work. Weaponry and technology do not win wars. Strategy does. And unfortunately, right. despite 10 years worth of signposts and every single piece of intelligence that we had back in the intelligence community, we had scores of wargaming predicting and going through this conflict and how it's going to unravel, right? And how it's going to unravel, it's, it's going to ratchet up if tensions are escalate, it's going to ratchet up all right. the way to a cyber Armageddon or nuclear Armageddon. Uh, President Biden knows this, and this is exactly why he's not deploying forces into Ukraine. He's not sending F-35s into Ukraine. It's because he knows... F-35s are never on the table. F-16s are on the table. Hugh, are you going to tell me that this is Vladimir Putin's game plan to lose 200,000 people in year one? His game plan was to win in one week. He had uh, officers going in there with police uniforms because they thought they were just going to take over Kiev and put somebody else in. So nothing that Vladimir Putin has planned has gone to what he wanted. Nothing that he has planned uh, in the beginning. You're absolutely correct, uh, Brian. He didn't take, he miscalculated how long it's going to take him uh, to run he over Ukraine. miscalculated everything. It, well, not everything, not everything, because, a, again, Putin is planning for a relentless, draining war of attrition, right. throwing people into the meat grinder. Yes, they've lost 200,000 men in World War II. The Russians sacrificed 25 million. With the population of Ukraine being 43 million, the Russians 143. You can do the math. That sure. is prohibitive. So the conflict is going to go on forever. And as long as it goes on, Putin achieves his goal. His definition of victory is very different from ours. Right. It's preventing us and Ukraine from victory. And it's the devastation of Ukraine. Right. Ukraine right now is being decimated. Its industrial base is destroyed. Its agricultural base is destroyed. It's ceasing to exist as a viable country because we are providing its entire gross domestic product, $196 billion. 200 uh, billion was 2020 war 
uh, one GDP for them. They entirely dependent right. on us. And right now, the Pentagon is already telegraphing to Ukraine that this is unsustainable because we're doing our own review uh, because our own weapon stockpile is depleting. Yep. Some of these uh, weaponry is going to take seven to 18 years to replace. Ukrainians are having extremely high burn rate of ammo. 5,000 rounds a day. So our production capacity is simply outmatched. Again, mm -hmm. this conflict reveals the Pentagon's inability to plan for anything, right? So right now, when China is actually looming, this is what I'm predicting right now. I see the writing on the wall just like what I predicted with Russia, right? China is gearing up for war, right? Xi Jinping has installed a wartime cabinet back in October. China just identified a glaring airspace security gaps in our defenses. And again, we, the Pentagon is basically, there's a malaise, right? There's intellectual laziness and there's mirror imaging. We, we think that everybody fights like Americans, everybody thinks like Americans. The adversary spent decades on figuring out our vulnerabilities. Okay. We're vulnerable in our cyber, uh, we're vulnerable in our space. And so we need to sit down and really think about how to go about these wars, how to prevent sure. them before. Rebecca? Yes. Can I yes, ask you sir. a question? You're, you're talking a little bit, and, and anybody who's just getting up, uh, Joe Biden is in Ukraine uh, this morning, this afternoon there. Um, you, you're talking about China may get involved militarily to assist Russia. Uh, and as we move into the second year of this war, what does that look like if suddenly China's feeding Russia stuff they need to blow us up? Exactly, uh, Steve. They already have. China is providing uh, drones to Russia that Russia has been using to try uh, to target Ukraine. As you remember, prior to February 24 last year, Xi Jinping and Putin met and they struck the so-called no limits partnership, right? They're not true partners in, um, in the true sense. They're more of adversaries, but they're a marriage of convenience because they're both uh, hell-bent on challenging the United States. Mm -hmm. So they're about to start providing, my intelligence analysis tells me, lethal weaponry. And so the major thing, the major threat that we should now be concerned about, instead of hyper-focusing on this conflict, which, you know, the Pentagon typically does, fighting the last war, we need to focus on the big picture. So here's the biggest threat, is if Russia and China challenge us in a two-theater war, right. we're going to have a really hard time prevailing. Sure. Because as, as I said, we're depleting our own weapons supply. Military analysts are right now estimating that we're going to run out of weaponry in about one to two weeks if China invades Taiwan, right. which the estimate right now, my own assessment is going to happen uh, during Biden's term. CIA Director hey. William Burns warned us that by 2027, uh, uh, she already gave order to the military of China to get ready for war. She directly said every energy needs to be put in for that war. So two theater war is something that I anticipate. Re Rebecca, what message does it send to China if we allow Russia to absorb Ukraine and don't do anything? So what, what China, the lesson that China is learning right now, uh, Brian, no, is No, but would that... just answer my question. Mm -hmm. If we sure. just said, okay, take Ukraine, uh, that's too bad. Zelensky, yes. you want, you want a uh, vacation home in the Caribbean? Why don't you go ahead and uh, take that? Uh, what do you, what, how soon do you think China would have taken Taiwan already? China would have would have taken it very quickly. Exactly. So I don't you, you have to anybody perform. You have advocates. To, so you, you're talking generally. Mm -hmm. You have to talk in the real world. In the real world, Russia. Oh, I'm talking in the real world, but, but Russia invaded Ukraine. Either we help Ukraine or we allow it to be taken over. And understand the ripple effect will be goodbye Moldova, which is already happening. Goodbye, uh, goodbye Georgia, which is already they lost about two provinces. And then go go ahead and start mounting troops on Poland unless they flip governments. And they've already started to infiltrate into the Baltic nations. At one point, we're going to be fighting over there. So either Brian. you back Ukraine to fight, 
or you just give the keys to Europe uh, back to Russia, and that really doesn't go well. Two points. Uh, first, with all due respect to you, uh, there's a logical disconnect in your argument. On the one hand, uh, everybody is saying how tactically incompetent Russia is, how it's losing. How in the world do you think uh, Russia is going to attack Poland, which is a NATO country, which automatically will trigger Article 5 collective defense? They'd wait a couple Putin of years, they'd, re they'd wait a couple of years, they rearm, and they would go. Do I think they'd be successful in Poland? They would just grind it out again by your theory. But and that's Putin what they would do. It's not suicidal. There's no intelligence, Brian, and I spent my intelligence career on this guy. Putin. Uh, so he'd is stop very at Ukraine? He's he'd not stop at Ukraine? He, okay, here's my assessment on what Putin would potentially agree to if we were to put a peace plan on the table. He would agree to uh, keeping the 20% of Ukrainians' territory. Uh, Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk, and Luhansk, which is pretty much the Donbass region is the industrial uh, base, plus Crimea. Right. So if we were to ever recognize, so which we So give up the country. We give won't. up the give, yeah. Rebecca, not the country. Uh, Twenty percent. The, uh, the most the most industrious part of the country. Just give it up. Exactly. So we should and just I'm give Texas to Mexico this. and but don't you know, they if they want it. The yeah. Parts of the uh, Donbas region it's and been, then also it's Crimea been, as well. It, it was a contested. Yeah, it was contested region. But yeah. the Crimea region is more of a uh, vacation spot. That's debatable. It never should have allowed it to be taken. Okay. Having said that. But to give up 25% of the country because they want it and think it's going to stop there is crazy. Well, I'm not advocating well, we gotta, that. I, we we got to go. I'm just telling Rebecca, you I'm the just reality. Telling you, thank you for joining us. Rebecca, of course. Very, thank very you for thank having you. me. Thank you so much. Appreciate Indeed. it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.